Hi, I'm Ryan Pease. I'm a nuclear engineering graduate student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm here to do a quick demonstration of a dynamic nuclear reactor simulator I have created uh, over the course of the last semester. It's very much a work in progress, but I wanted to kind of, to kind of um, show the, the base work I have laid uh, for future iterations and future expansions. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very excited about it. Uh, I think it may become something bigger, and uh, hopefully we will be able to utilize this for both educational purposes and uh, for the public. So let's get right into it. Uh, I decided to try to model the University of Wisconsin's uh, trigger, trigger reactor, which is a very simple reactor. It has four control rods and a transient rod. Um, so I modeled all that accurately. I have a source, and I also have the scram capability. Uh, I ended up using uh, backward Euler numerical methods coupled with the uh, six delayed neutron group uh, point reactor kinetics equations uh, to basically get the final results of the simulation. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna, we have a pretty strong source right now. You can adjust these things, uh, 22 microsecond uh, neutron lifetime, and we're just going to put the initial bank height at around 7 inches. Let's turn the source on and let's get going. Uh, let me get, okay, there we go. Um, you just had to get my processors up to speed. They're kind of dawdling a little, little tired or tired or something. Okay, so now we're underway. So right now we're we are at a steady state as what as we would predict um, in a subcritical state with a source on. Let me just start with drawing control blade four. Uh, just like in real life, uh, control blade four in our reactor on uh, here on campus is the weakest blade. So I'm just going to get that one out of the way. The, you know, this isn't the best uh, behavior. You know, I wouldn't actually do this sort of uh, withdrawal behavior in real life. I try to keep things as even as possible. But it's just a demonstration. So let's just uh, let's just ignore my bad um, bad um, operating experience right here. I'm going to withdraw control blade one about an inch. All right, now we're going to start basically looking for this subcritical behavior that we uh, predict and see in real reactors when we have a source in. Um, as I keep withdrawing these blades further, uh, further out, what we're going to see is that this uh, increase here, this I'll call it a jump for now, this ramp jump is going to get larger as we get closer to critical, and we're going to see this um, basically convergence tail get um, more curved as we get closer to critical. And the reason why we see um, this, I'll call it convergence tail, is if you look at, um, I don't, I'm not going to recite the equation off the top of my head, but uh, if you look at the subcritical multiplication equation with the source in, you'll see it's an infinite series. And as we get closer to critical, it'll take longer, essentially, for that series to converge. And that's what we're seeing physically here in the program, and that's what we see physically in real life. So. It's real, very reassuring. Let's keep withdrawing. We're about 40 cents away. Now in real life, you obviously you don't have indicators that tell you what your reactivity is. You basically just got to go by, um, you know, your neutron graphs. So at least, well, at least in the UW trigger reactor, we don't have any sort of reactivity indicators. So now we're getting this nice tail coming off. Let's keep withdrawing some blades here. So now we're around nine, cent, 9 cents away from critical. And as you can see, now we're getting a lot more neutron response when we do that uh, withdrawal. And now we're getting a really long, very prominent tail. And this is. Uh, you know, this is really the reason why we put sources in nuclear reactors, is so we can visually approach critical and get an understanding of where we are in the reactor. For instance, if I didn't have the source in the reactor, our neutron population, you know, it would drop and be below this, basically I'll call this a threshold level. Um, you know, right now, you know, instrumentation is always limited, there's always threshold levels, and, um, in, you know, typical reactors, you you can't see what the reactor is doing be below a certain threshold level and that's why you need a source or some low level uh, instrumentation to kinda give you ideas of where you are alright so let's let's basically just go critical here 
So as you saw, I just I just went critical. You know, nothing went kaboom. Actually, sorry, I'm super critical right now. Uh, the general public, you know, generally uh, when you hear someone say, "Oh, the reactor went super critical," they uh, you'd, you'd expect people to be running around screaming, red lights to be flashing. But you know, I'm we're all calm and content. We're happy. Nothing's gone bad. Our neutron population, our you know power density is barely going up. And that's reality, you know. Generally, you know, reactors go super critical fairly often to uh, you know adjust power levels. So, super criticality, not a big deal. As long as you're not prompt critical, that's uh, that's a whole other story. So we're slowly just going up here on this ramp. Let's start to have some fun. I'm going to actually um, do some prompt, uh, excuse me, prompt insertions and withdrawals right now, just to kind of show that the program realistically models that behavior as well. So I'm going to start off small and we'll get bigger. I, insert, I withdrew this a little too far earlier. Let's start with a start with a 20, 20 cent uh, insertion. So I'm going to engage. And we see that nice prompt jump as we would see in real life. And we got this nice, uh, this nice exponential ramp here. Remember this is a log scale so when we see a line like this, it's uh, constant, uh, well not constant exponential, but uh, you have an exponential function essentially, or exponential increase. And this is what our um, exponential decay term is, or you know, our exponential term is up here. So you can check that out while we're watching this. So we had a fairly, uh, fairly flat line, I'll call it. Flat compared to what we're going to be doing very shortly. So let's insert uh, let's insert like 40 cents here. So we have a much larger prompt jump, and then we have a, you know, we look at this curve, um, you know, the period of this curve, and you look at the period of this curve, and this period, uh, this curve is much steeper, which means we had a much shorter period, and that makes sense. We're inserting more reactivity. We're going to see, um, we're going to see a smaller period. So let's just end the day off. With uh, with the high note, literally, uh, we're going to go prompt critical. So I'm just gonna, you know, unfortunately, I'm I got the power pretty high, so I don't have a lot of room to work with. And those of you in in the business, in the nuclear engineering industry, and in, uh, in school will know that it, when you go prompt critical, it's uh, it goes up very quickly. Um, I I don't think I've said this yet, but the program right now. It does not have temperature feedback. It's something I'm looking at adding in the near future, and therefore, uh, when I do this prompt insertion, we're not going to see uh, this sort of characteristic uh, pulse shape that we would predict with a Fugue's uh, Nordheim model. Um, so yeah, there's no temperature feedback, so I'm just going to have to manually disengage the transient rod here. I think we're at a low enough power level, so I got around a dollar I'm going to insert. In three, two, one, engage. So as you see, yeah, very quickly, you know, it very quickly goes up. It's it's essentially an infinite prompt jump, if uh, if you will. And now we're coasting down, coasting down. I'm just going to get us to a level position real quick, and then I'll insert a scram. So yeah, um, speaking of temperature feedback, uh, it's something I look to add to the program in the very near future. Um, just didn't have enough time during this semester to complete it, but I will probably make, make another video when that comes online. So let's just scram and uh, call it a day. So yeah, you see that very large prompt drop. And uh, basically this tail that's coming off here, it's all from our delayed neutrons. And if we if you waited here another few minutes, which uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do, um, you'll you'd see that this reactor period, and trust me, I've tested this several times. This reactor period goes to negative 80.6, which is our um, longest lived half life. Sorry, our longest lived delayed neutron precursor half life. And uh, just like in real life, um, the reactor, the UW trigger reactor, goes to negative 80.6 so 
yeah, I've been very happy with how the reactor simulator has been behaving. It's very um, believable, very realistic, and uh, I can't wait to show it off in the near future. Oh, I just realized that we're actually not going to converge to that because I have the source on. Silly me. Well, like I said, it now it should converge eventually, but I had the source on accidentally. Now, thanks for watching the video once again. Uh, my name is Ryan Pease. I'm a nuclear engineer here at the University of Wisconsin, and I hope you enjoyed the video.